There. <laughs> um, so back, see, this had to be 14 years ago. Back then, the internet was a much different place. You know, it was a, uh, it felt a little bit like the Wild West. So it was uh, just the just the fact that you could log in and talk and talk to someone in a you know another state, another country that had the same interest as you was not kind of an amazing experience as a kid. And so the way Sean and I met was around the, an interest in computer security, hacking. If it weren't for the internet in, the, in that seminal moment of the internet, um, you know, we probably never would have been friends. And in fact, if we'd gone to the same high school together, we, we never would have known that we shared these various interests. So, so there was something really sort of magical about what happened. It seemed totally normal to us, but people in hindsight who hear the story um, of, of how we first met are sort of shocked by it. They can't even believe we got so far in our relationship before, um, you know, before ever meeting each other in person. Um, Sean living in Massachusetts and my friend living in Australia who was a hacker and a friend of mine who was a Russian hacker. All of these various people that I was getting connected to all over the world were people I never otherwise would have met. They're not people that I ever could have met. Um, suddenly this, this massive world had been collapsed, it had been shrunk. The world really became incredibly small. Um, that's, that process has continued, but there's something I think lost in that initial, in that initial burst of excitement that we both felt. Sean and I began to begin to ask the question of, you know, sort of, why has the internet become so boring? You know, what was it that excited us early on that's no longer present? You know, with, with this world of unlimited connection and unlimited possibility, how come we find ourselves bored online? There, there's something exciting about spontaneity, about the serendipity, there's something exciting about the serendipity of being connected to someone that you never otherwise would have met or hadn't, hadn't, hadn't appreciated, or someone who you feel like really understands you, someone you feel like you can really connect with. Well, the, the internet, that serendipity's gone. You, all of your interactions online are constrained by the people you already know. Live video is now possible for everybody, in large part because we now have this abundance of bandwidth that it, you know, so, so technically uh, we can support live video. That's all starting to happen. And then you couple that with this the ubiquity of webcams. And then you add to that the fact that our identities have now been uh, successfully recreated online. You can imagine with so many people online right now and with so many webcams, how many of those people uh, are interested in the same thing that you're thinking about right at that moment. There's so many, there's so many of them, and even something more rare. Um, they're out there, and yet there's no means by which to reach them. You know, the first thing that airtime is about is just connecting with anyone, anywhere, instantly, without any friction or any delay or any software. This should be a web-based experience. It should be frictionless. And the second thing it's about is experiencing life together, experiencing media together. And that's, that's when we say experiencing together, we mean a live, real-time, synchronous experience. The rest of the web is largely asynchronous, meaning people are interacting, they're taking turns interacting. There's a time, there's a time delay between when you post something, when someone sees it, and when they respond. Uh, there's nothing more powerful than, uh, in terms of, like, if, you, if you think through, like, why do people share content on the internet? Why do they editorialize? Why do they write comments? Why do they make videos? They want some sort of reaction from people. They want to feel like they've been heard, like someone cared. You know, one of the best analogies for what airtime offers is if you look in the real world and you think about some of the best events you've gone to where you've, you've, you've met people, um, the host of the party, the host of the event, is their job is to connect you to the people that, that you should know, that you want to know. And, and beyond that, they're, they're guiding the conversation. They're helping you understand who the person is, why they're interesting. They're also probably responsible for why you trust that person. So it provides an environment where you're able to uh, kind of open up and get to know someone on a, you know, a deeper level. And that role is a role that uh, some people do well, but absent that, Meeting someone new, making small talk, trying to get to know someone is actually a, a pretty difficult thing. So we look at airtime as sort of being the host of the party. So it's it's uh, a service where we're doing everything we can to help you uh, find the people that you should know, understand why 
they're interesting and then help guide that conversation and uh, help you get to know them. Um, we're, we're kind of this, we're, we haven't used this term, but we're kind of this world collider. Um, we smash people together from across the world, and in the process of doing that, you know, we, we allow them to express themselves uh, in, in ways that they had never even considered. We, we take away so many of the anxieties, take away so much of the burden of social interaction, and allow people to just have fun with each other. And the possibilities for live performance, jumping on the platform and you know, doing a puppet show for a random stranger and watching their reaction or surfing through people and realizing that somebody's playing guitar and playing songs for you. The, the opportunity for people to just perform for one another, it's this, it's this incredible untapped reservoir of, of creativity. And the reason why we're not all performing for each other is that we're, we lack that visceral interaction or feedback from people as we you know, say and do interesting things. There's no reason why we can't, acting as the host, facilitate relationships, um, not just between you and your friends who you already know, but between you and the set of people who you should know. And so the idea that there may be someone in the building you live in that shares one of your passions, um, you know, or someone that's just watched a TV show that is excited to talk about it with you. Um, Airtime provides a way for you to find those people and then be yourself, get to know them, and then allow that conversation to progress wherever you want. You know, everything that you care about, everything that you're passionate about is all there and available to be shared. Um, and in a sense, you get to know someone in the most natural way, you know, possible. It's almost as if you're carrying everything in the real world. You'd be carrying absolutely everything you care about around with you at all times, just to uh, you know have meaningful interaction. It's kind of a, as you look at it from an idealistic standpoint, it's something that the internet can facilitate. Where you know you, you in this world will meet all of the people that you will be you know, deeply connected to and have the most meaningful interactions with. And we really just have only scratched the surface with what the internet does today.